Hello students, this is Ishaan Akbar with you. In today's lecture, we will discuss that how can we calculate the stress increase due to a point load applied on the surface of earth. If a point load is applied on the surface of earth, then the soil below this load will face or will sustain some increase in stress in effect with the uh, previous stresses on the point on any point below the surface of earth so to study this we have a figure to explain the whole uh, phenomena that will take place during the calculation of the increased stress below the point load so first of all this is a point load this is also known as concentrated load p its units will be in kilonewton or will be in pounds, LBs. So when a point load P acts on any point on the surface of earth, then it, it leaves some effect. It posts some effects on the points below this load. That point may be far away from the position, from the vertical position of this load suppose this load is acting on the z axis of the space this is the z axis our depth axis we have other other two axes as x and y if a point p acts on any point on the surface of earth and there is a point a which has coordinates of x y z by considering this point as the origin so we can say that this point will have a distance of x units along the x-axis and this point will have distance of y units along y-axis and this point will have z units of depth. I mean you can say here that this is the depth of this point that is known as z from this load point on the surface of earth. This is direct distance. You can say this as the distance from surface of earth or the point of load to the point where we are going to calculate stress increase. This stress increase is normally denoted by delta sigma z. It means that change in stress at depth z. This z is for depth. This sigma is for stress and this is for delta is for change it means that change in stress at depth z so if the point has three coordinates so it is a special point I mean it is in space it has three coordinates as x y and z and we have to calculate the stress increase at this point this point may be on this side right side this may be on left side this may be somewhere here but wherever it is it will have three coordinates if it is along the z-axis then x and y coordinate will be zero and if it is along the x-axis it is on this axis so y and coordinate will exist but x coordinate sorry y and z coordinate will be zero and x coordinate will exist only so if we have some point that has all three coordinates are some of the uh, some of these coordinates mean if we have a point which has x y and z we can calculate the stress increase if we have just x and y and don't have z we can calculate mean don't have z means zero z and if we have y and z and x value is zero we can calculate the stress increase if we have x and z y is zero we can calculate still we can calculate increase in stress at depth z so the one thing that must be known to a person is depth of the point at which we are going to calculate the stress. And if x, y are not given, then we will consider that this point lies exactly below P point, uh, this concentrated or point load along the z axis. So x will be 0 and y will be 0 in this case. So uh, now we are considering that all the coordinates of the point A are existing. 
So we have X, we have Y, and we have Z. So how can we calculate if we have all these coordinates of the point A? So first of all, what will we do? We will use the simple formula that is delta sigma Z that is equal to 3P. Here P is the point load that may be in kilonewtons or that may be in LBs. So here we will put the value of P divided by this whole term is known as denominator. 2 pi is 3.1416. Z is the depth of the point. This is depth coordinate and into 1 plus R over Z raised to power square and whole is closed with the power of 5 by 2. So simply we can do here is that we can extract this 3 2 pi these both these three terms are constants and this term is variable 1 plus r over z so we can simply write 3 by 2 pi and 1 by r over z square plus 1 raised to power 5 by 2 these are just displaced with one another there is no difference r over z square plus 1 raised to power 5 by 2 so we call this as influence factor this is known as influence factor or influence value so this influence factor when multiply with the remaining terms what are the remaining terms this is p and at the in the denominator there are z square so whenever we multiply this means simply we will put the value of this whole term as i1 and this is written over here as i1 and when it is multiplied by the p by z square mean we have replaced this 3 by 2 pi 1 plus r over z square raised to the power 5 by 2 with i1. So simply we will put the value, uh, value of i1 instead of all these things. So we will calculate i1 separately. Then we will put the value of i1 in this formula and value of p here and value of z square over here. And then we will be able to find out the value of delta sigma z. To understand this, I have included a, uh, an example in this uh, lecture so that we can understand easily that how can we calculate the values of uh, all these terms or uh, the value of stress increase. So simply going with an example, there is a point load of 500 kilonewton which is acting on the surface of Earth. So simply we can see we can say that this point load is considered to be 500 kilonewton. Calculate the vertical stress increase delta sigma z at z is equal to 0, 2 meter, 4 meter, 6 meter, and 10 meter, and 20 meters. I mean, we have uh, uh, six values of z 0, 2, 4, 6, 10, and 20. We have to calculate six times stress increase at z is equal to 0 meters, there will be one stress. At z is equal to 2 meter, there will be second stress at 4 meter, at 6 meter, and at 10 meter, and then at 20 meter. So we will have, totally we will have six stress increases at six various points, six different points. Given that x and y are 3 meter and 4 meter respectively, x is given to be 3 meter and y is given to be 4 meter. So simply we have tabulated x and y. In the, you can see in this formula that we have not discussed R term till now. So I will let you know in the whole procedure that what is R. Simply you can see here X and Y. And in the figure you can see here this is R. If, if we ponder on this, we can see this triangle. This and this. This value is Y. This value is x because this is along y axis. This was y, then this will also be y. This angle will be equal to 90 degree if we see it from the top. If we observe it from the top, then uh, from the top view, it will be 90 degree. So it is a right triangle. When it is right triangle, so this will be hypotenuse. So let's say this is base and this is perpendicular. So by applying the Pythagorean theorem, we can determine the value of R, that is R is equal to x square plus y square square root. 
simply the value of r is equal to x square plus y square square root. We have x with us, this 3 meter. We have y 4 meter. And x and y for the whole question are constant. So simply, we will have a constant value of r for the whole question mean for six points. So when we go, uh, when we try to calculate the value of r, it is r is equal to x square plus y square square root. Here we have x as 3 its square and y as 4 its square and whole square root 3 is equal to 3 square 9 and 4 square is 16. So it will be equal to 25 square root. The square root of 25 is 5 because values of x and y are constant. So all the values of r will be same. So it is 5 for all cases are for all points. So now we have to calculate r by z means we have uh, we have calculated value of r. Now we have to divide value of z with the value of r. We will divide 5 by 0. So 5 by 0, whenever anything is divided by 0, the answer is infinity. So simply the answer will be infinity. When we divide 5 by 2, it will be 2.5, 5 by 4, 1.25, 5 by 6, 0 0.83, 5 by 10 is 0 0.5, and 5 by 20 is 0 0.25. Now, moving forward, we have to calculate I1. So you can see here that I1 is calculated by using only the value of R by Z. So simply, we have Z values, we have R by Z values calculated uh, in the last, last page, on the last page, and P is 500 given in the question. So for the calculation of I1, simply I will put the value of R by Z, I1 is equal to 3 over 2 pi into 1 over r by z square. What is r by z? This is infinity. So simply I will write it as infinity plus 1 and raised to power 5 by 2. So we can see here that the denominator is infinity. When infinity is in the denominator, then the whole term becomes equal to 0. As we studied that, when denominator is 0, the answer will be infinity. So reciprocally, when denominator is infinity, the answer will be 0. So for the first case, I1 is 0. For the second case, if we calculate I1, it will be equal to 3 over 2 pi into 1 over R by Z here is 2.5. So we'll write it as 2.5 square plus 1 whole raised to power 5 by 2. And when we calculate the value of I1 using this, so what will we do? We will simply take the square of 2.5, then add 1, and then take this power as 2.5 or 5 by 2, and divide the answer by 1, then multiply with 3, and then divide by 2 pi. Simply you can get the value by this way. And what we get from this these calculations for I1 is 0 0.0034. In the same way, we will put 1.25 in case instead of 2.5, then 0 0.83, then 0 0.5, then 0 0.25 for the value of R by Z. And we will have different values of I1. Here the I1 will be 0 0.04542. And for this case, we will have I1 equal to 0 0.1278. For this, we will have I1 equal to 0 0.2733. And for this case, we will have I1 equal to 0 0.40, sorry, 4103. Simply, now we have to calculate, because we have got all values of I1, now we have to calculate delta sigma z. This delta sigma z is equal to p over z square. What is p here? That is 500 kilo newton. 
over z square is zero here and i1 is zero also. So when i1 is multiplied with the whole value, the final answer will be zero. Means the point at which the load itself is acting, the stress increase at that point will be zero, but it will be uh, distributed towards uh, lower points. So simply we can calculate delta sigma z for next points. We can say as z1 delta sigma z2 500 load is same divided by z square z here is 2 meter we can see the value of z 2 square into i1 is 0 0.0034 the final answer for the stress increase at the depth of 2 meter will be equal to 0 0.4217 what will be unit Unit will be simply, this has no unit. This value has no unit. So the units will be for kilonewton and this two was in meters. You can see here the units of Z is meter. So it will be two square means meter square. Kilonewton per meter squares mean kilo pascal. So simply for the next case, we will calculate as delta sigma Z2. This is equal to this is 2 and this is sorry this is 3 500 divided by 4 square into 0 0.04542 the final answer for the stress increase at this point is 1.42 kilopascals and for next point when calculated by using calculator delta sigma z4 this is equal to 1.42 Seven seven kilopascals. For fifth point, the stress increase is found to be one point three seven, and for the last point, stress increase is found to be zero point five one three. So, what can we observe here? At the top point, the stress was zero. And we observed an increase from this point to this point to 6 meter and then the stress is decreasing so the uh, phenomena or the trend of the stress is simply that it increases first and then starts decreasing and at uh, some point it will be equal to zero so it starts increasing at some specific point. Uh, suppose at this point it was 1.42, then it became 1.77, and then it decreased to 0 0.513. So first it starts increasing at some specific value, it starts decreasing. This is trend of increase in stress due to a point load. Thank you very much.